Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to Panorama Consulting Group and SAP's presentation on impact on private equity in the mid-market. My name is Chris DeVault. I'm Director of Industry Relations here at Panorama Consulting Group. And today with us, we have Mary Coppard from SAP and Vince Rouleau from SAP. A special offer today's uh, attendees for the webinar, uh, an hour of free consulting. So make sure to take advantage of that going uh, through our website and through this webinar. Um, exposure to our consultants at a pro bono uh, rate is always beneficial to our prospects and our customers, and certainly would encourage you to take advantage of some free time uh, to pick our brains a bit. Panorama Consulting as a whole is complete management consulting group. On the left-hand side, you can see our service lines ranging from turnaround analysis, which is quite critical uh, now, nowadays, and then going down through financial restructuring, HCM process management, digital strategies, software technology selection, all the way down to ERP expert witness um, lines of business. On the right-hand side, you can see where we focus, large focus in manufacturing, uh, but we've also had a lot of success in, in high-tech industries, professional services, healthcare, uh, even nonprofit. Some of the um, niche industries that we focus on are in retail, energy, agriculture, and food and beverage. With that, I turn it over to the SAP team. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Chris. So, uh, hello everyone. As Chris mentioned, my name is Mary Coppard, and I'm very happy to speak with you today. So, ERP across any industry and across any revenue band is going to increase the valuation of a company. So, there's value for every company. And our purpose today in highlighting what ERP can do is to remind you, perhaps for the first time, that SAP can provide you who are working with private equity firms, you guys who are working with portfolio companies, and you guys who are working with companies who may be looking to get funding from private equity, that we at SAP have ERP solutions that are not just built for the large enterprise, but also for our mid-market as well. And our goal for our brief time together is for you to come away from this webinar realizing that if you are dealing with a mid-market company, we can help you. So you may have heard of R3 or by design. We may call it different names, different products, but it all starts with SAP. And shortly you'll see customers across a spectrum of sizes and across a variety of industries. You're also gonna hear about how SAP with our partners in our ecosystem offer an extensibility of platform, regardless of which ERP is delivered. And all of this contributes to the most important increase of the valuation of a company. We're gonna to touch on the intelligent enterprise, what that means, and show you some value that our customers in the mid-market have recognized. And with the promise to help customers run at their best, SAP helps ensure businesses of all sizes can benefit from innovation without disruption. So I just wanna talk for a minute about the evolution of business. The top of this slide shows the predominant technologies of the time that started to trigger changes on how solutions were built. It's the evolution of IT. The enabling technologies show what the IT of the time delivered. If we were meeting face-to-face, -face, I'd probably ask you where on this timeline you entered the market. For me, I was one of the first at university to have a PC, but the big wow came when I was working in the 90s in downtown and I emailed a client late, late at night. I worked away in my little office and the response from the client came back moments later, except he was at home. And it was mind blowing to me back then in 1993 that you didn't need to actually be in front of your computer in the office to answer business emails, which we all know very well today. Now, back to the slide. At the bottom of the slide talks about the evolution of, uh, sorry, at the bottom of the slide, it talks about the value that we got from these enabling technologies. And it's that middle part that talks about the evolution of implementation. Some of you on the webinar today may be coming from the implementation side. And at one time, you would have gathered the requirements from the business and put them into a system. 
maybe even put them into R3. There were no best practices. It was taking requirements and sticking them into a system. Eventually at SAP, we came up with 25 leading best practices. This led companies to question whether the way they did things were actually reducing time and effort to see results. That in turn turned into rapid deployment solutions. It turned to fixed scopes of work with fixed results. And that turned into the model company, how to go ahead and start achieving those results. So the evolution of business isn't just on product, but on implementation. And from a customer value creation, we are in the era of the intelligent enterprise. And I'll speak more about the intelligent enterprise in a few minutes and why we're so focused at SAP on having all of our customers from our small five person companies that run SAP up to our tens of thousands of users that run SAP, why we're so focused on all of them being intelligent enterprises. So quickly, I want to give you a glance as to why we are so bold to state that we can help you and your clients, companies of any size. It isn't just our 100,000 employees or 21,000 partners, but it's the number of mid-market customers that have already put their trust in SAP to drive their business forward. In fact, 80% of our customers are in the mid-market. And we spend 4.3 billion euros in research and development. And we're able to take innovations such as IoT, Internet of Things, and machine learning, and leverage them throughout our entire portfolio. So SAP has always led the way in terms of big overhauls of technology. And as we saw on the evolution of IT slide, our current era is the era of the intelligent enterprise. What is an intelligent enterprise? Well, they apply technology, advanced technologies really, and best practices within business processes that are agile and integrated. And they do this to increase the resilience of their companies in these changing markets, to increase success and sustainability. And this graphic is how SAP captures the intelligent enterprise. It paints our vision. It's our vision for companies with 10 million in revenue to 10 billion in revenue. But for the sake of relevancy and, and time for this audience, I wanna boil the ocean a little bit and talk about the intelligent enterprise within applications, really the intelligent suite, the ERP. What does it mean, intelligent enterprise for ERP and finance? As this is the first concern many firms with private equity interests focus on. So let's address that. In an intelligent enterprise, SAP's ERPs play a key role in the organization's success in three main ways. The first is real-time financial context. With SAP's ERP solutions, you can ensure the viability of business models and projects by equipping the entire organization to understand the financial context and profitability impact of their decisions and plans. Also, with real-time financial context, you can increase scale without adding complexity. And you can take advantage of standardized processes that are built in for delivering financial and operational insight. The second way ERP and finance uh, contribute to the success of businesses is with new levels of productivity. You can remove barriers that traditionally slow companies down by connecting functions and applications company-wide. This means you're able to reimagine the user experience. You also increase both efficiency and digital trust by removing unnecessary steps as you automate controls, manage identities, manage access and data usage. The third way that SAP's ERP solutions for both our large market and our mid market, they provide you with insights to adapt and improve. By using predictive analytics, you can anticipate and respond to changes and challenges. You can predict behavior, evaluate scenarios, and deliver insight at the point of action. I wanna to briefly touch on just another part of this slide, the bottom part, the business technology platform underlying our applications. Here, customers use intelligent technologies, such as machine learning and internet of things to drive innovation. And machine learning and IoT are not just the domain of large companies. Across the mid-market, we see companies harnessing IoT to dramatically reduce their costs and drive higher profit. We have customers who've put sensors on their product shipments 
to ensure optimal conditions are being met throughout the product journey and monitor that in real time. This has led to a decrease in bad product, but it also created a new subscription-based recurring business model for the customer. What's fascinating is that what's this customer size? They're 15 users and only 35 million in revenue. So why do I call out this example? Well, it's because it's important to know that the innovations and therefore cost savings and higher profits realized by our largest customers using SAP can be gained by smaller customers using our ERP solutions. And all of this, uh, the business processes, the application, the technology, they come together to help customers be best run businesses. And this is what SAP gives you, is a trusted path to the intelligent enterprise, regardless of the ERP solution or regardless of the size of customer. And so with that, I'm delighted to throw the baton over to my colleague, Vince, who's gonna talk a little bit about the organizations that are winning with SAP across industries and across revenue bands. Vince? Excellent, thanks, Mary. Uh, and that's, this is really a great lead into the remainder of our discussion. Earlier in the presentation, Mary had highlighted how SAP supports a wide range of companies and industries. And this picture includes just a small sampling of the customers that leverage SAP, regardless of their total size or revenue, across a very diverse set of industries. And that's important because the learnings and best practices that are developed into the solution are industry specific. So every organization can get quicker time to value as a result of that experience. So for example, a growing consumer product company in the mid-market space can benefit from the supply chain capabilities that have been developed with larger multinational organizations like Coca-Cola, you know, eliminating the need for manual spreadsheet or redundant processes so that they can focus on growing their business. Because at the end of the day, a $20 million supply chain can be just as complex as a billion dollar supply chain. So why leave it to chance? And the same is true for every industry that we cover, whether that's discrete or process manufacturing, retail and wholesale distribution, or many of the service-driven industries. All of our development is based on best practices and gets driven into the model company that Mary referenced earlier. If you can advance to the next slide, please. So now let's take a look at how SAP truly differentiates itself in the marketplace. And that's by providing a full end-to-end -end ERP solution. There are several niche solution providers that address a specific business process, like say manufacturing or finance or human resources. But when our customer, but what our customers consistently tell us is that those solutions, while they may meet the need of a specific department or function, they're often too siloed and do not integrate into the rest of the organization. And that creates broader inefficiencies and costly overhead to keep those solutions working together. And generally speaking, the vast majority of mid-market organizations that I work with are trying to avoid that type of IT infrastructure that exists only to keep software packages from multiple vendors talking to each other. They simply prefer to be more nimble. So let's discuss this and, and from an example standpoint. So the breadth of our solution coverage is important. And we'll look at it through the lens of, say, a private equity firm. So if you look at the breadth of our coverage for both the private equity firm and their portfolio companies. So if I look at it from the PE firm, so the ability for the holding organization, or the PE firm in this case, to have an accurate and real-time view of their financial picture across all of their portfolio companies can have a dramatic impact on both the speed and quality of the decisions that need to be made quarter in and quarter out. And for the portfolio companies themselves, they can target their implementation to focus on key processes or functions that will add immediate value to their business. And from there, based on their schedule, add additional capabilities over, to, over time to support their growth. But again, all from the same platform. So a portfolio company that has immediate requirements in say manufacturing or supply chain can start with that business process area to address their priority needs and from there phase in the rest of their ERP rollout accordingly. And that allows them to maximize the value across their entire business process, much like the private equity firm could focus on the area, perhaps at a higher level or at a shared service level. 
So there's tremendous value in that. Mary, if you could advance to the next slide, please. So from a system standpoint, what does ERP look like? That's a very broad question, of course. SAP provides an app-based solution that makes it very easy for an end user to navigate to the information and functions that they need to run their business day in and day out. So whether they're viewing and sharing a key report or perhaps executing a specific transaction with a customer or supplier, all navigation is managed through an easy to use set of apps. In this particular example, we're looking at functions designed for accounts payable. If you could build this please, Mary. But note that these roles are part of a broader ERP system that again exists on the same platform, like manufacturing and HR. So there's no need to learn multiple tools or user experiences. It all exists in the same system as highlighted here. The solution supports these unique business processes via an integrated platform and a consistent UI. And from any of these apps, users can easily dive into more details. Next slide, please. So for example, a detail for a detailed accounts payable overview, I can immediately dive into say invoice and discount data, all driven through exception reporting that will highlight where I need to focus my time. Next slide, please. And from there, I can drill into the details and either take action or alert others via workflow if needed. In this case, the solution has automatically identified opportunities within our supplier base to leverage additional cash discounts. Next slide, please. And in general, ERP solutions also need to deliver the right experience based on the role and the needs of the user. In this particular example, and again, we're, all, we're working from the exact same system, we have the ability to access sales order information. And while we have that experience on the desktop as indicated on the left, it's also important for field-facing personnel to have that information on their phones or tablets. This would of course apply to field and maintenance teams that are responsible for managing assets across multiple sites. So really what this all ties into is that regardless of the industry, regardless of the role, SAP's ERP system provides an intuitive user experience that is designed around the business process and more importantly, with the end user in mind. If you can go to the next slide, please. So some of the capabilities that I just discussed and that Mary highlighted earlier extend beyond the core ERP solution. We have helped to build a well-connected and well-organized ecosystem that most importantly supports our customer. Part of that ecosystem includes the SAP App Center. You can think of this as like the Apple Store for third-party developers. and allows organizations to build very quick, specific apps to help support a, very, a specific business process relatively cheap, relatively easy to consume. SAP Partner Edge, which includes SAP certified partners that help to implement and in some cases resell our solutions. To date, there are more than 500 of those partners in North America alone. SAP endorsed apps are third-party solutions that are embedded within our ERP solution, sharing the same data model, the same user experience, and that are resold by SAP. These are common for some of the sh shared service business processes. So for example, within the finance and procurement functions, invoice reconciliation and automation is an important business process. Open text provides a seamless experience to companies that leverage those capabilities. And finally, SAP solution extensions are solutions that solve a very specific business challenge, often within a specific industry or line of business that allows our partners to build off the core capabilities and provide a very unique value proposition to their customers based on that experience. So we're able to surround the core with a set of capabilities that delivers additional value. Mary, if you can go to the next slide, please. Ultimately, the proof plays out in the value our customers receive. And whether that, and whether that value is realized through top line growth, bottom line savings, business model innovation, or some combination of all three, Customers that have implemented ERP systems have consistently realized value and improvement in their business processes. One particular area I'd like to highlight is around inorganic growth via mergers and acquisitions. And again, for private equity firms, this is their business. 
60% of all M&A decisions touch an SAP system. So it's not surprising that a consistent source of feedback from our customers is that if the parent or acquired company is running a common ERP plat platform, the ease of initial system integration exceeds their expectations. So what does that mean? It typically then allows those companies to execute their plans ahead of schedule, and therefore they can achieve a greater than anticipated rate of return. Now, if you look at it operationally, the breadth and depth of, ERP of SAP's ERP solution will allow the portfolio company to realize value in targeted areas of their business and then roll out those additional capabilities accordingly. So the examples that are listed here towards the bottom right represent the benefits that our customers have received from implementing SAP's ERP capabilities across multiple industries and business functions, whether that's tied to manufacturing, supply chain, sales order management, or some combination of the above. So I'd like to thank my co-presenters, Mary and Chris, for kicking off today's session. It's certainly a topic that we can spend a lot of time on. Hopefully in the 20 or so minutes, we've been able to provide a snapshot of SAP's ERP offering, and more importantly, how ERP solutions can be leveraged across both portfolio companies and private equity firms, regardless of the industry, to drive value in their business. So with that, Chris, I'll turn it back over to you. Great, thank you, Vince. And thank you, Mary, very informative from both sides. And you know what Panorama has seen working with SAP over the years uh, with some shared private equity uh, firms is the consistency. Uh, the consistency that you know that you kind of offer to a private equity firm and, and the portfolio of clients uh, provides a lot of trust there. And you know when approaching SAP uh, with our clients, SAP has always done a good job of really understanding the needs um, before positioning any type of um, any type of solution as well. So uh, it's been a, a good relationship over the years. Just a reminder here uh, to take advantage of our one free hour of consulting. So make sure to uh, contact us via our website uh, and get uh, some access to some knowledgeable consultants there. And we have some questions coming in here, uh, Vince and Mary, um, around related to AI and machine learning. Um, what are you seeing? Uh, you know, how, what are you seeing adoption across all lines of businesses or particular lines of businesses? Um, Vince, why don't I, I'll take this one. Um, sure thing. You know what? We are. Um, I know I call that one example in the presentation, but the question is really interesting because, especially today, in light of our reality that we live today, these adoptions of really these digital enablers, the you know big data, machine learning, IoT, they really are um, gaining traction now. Manufacturing that whole uh, industry really were the early adopters of it. But now we're seeing finance and HR really picking it up, leveraging technologies like um, machine learning to do an intelligent forecast. We think about chatbots being used. Um, so we're really seeing it across all sizes of companies because companies need to pivot and find new revenue models and these enablers are really Chris what's allowing them to do so yeah absolutely thank you and then given the recent strain on the economy and the pandemic are you seeing any trends uh, appearing in the mid-market and Mary look this is Vince if I can if I can take this one because this mm -hmm. is actually uh, this hits close to home based on some recent work over the six months it's, it's it's been an interesting year to say the least um, and I think we're all looking forward to 2021 uh, getting here. But but what has actually stood out, and and I've been pleasantly surprised by organizations uh, that have been moving forward with plans and or in some cases very specific projects around pivoting to digital transformation and, and leveraging some of the the ERP capabilities that we talked about today. Um, I think there's there's certainly some organizations are going to be challenged going forward. But most of the companies that we have been working with, and we've actually seen an uptick, candidly, in the mid-market in terms of the level of activity, many are leveraging this time to, to quote unquote, retool uh, the, their, the experience that they're providing to the customer as well as their own operations and get ready for the, you know, the, what the post-COVID world and some of the growth that, sh that should follow coming out of it. So we're actually seeing organizations take advantage of this time and we've seen a steady stream of activity in terms of our, our customers in the mid-market space uh, that are 
that are adopting and, and rolling out these capabilities. Okay, good. Well, thank you, Vince. And uh, once again, Vince and Mary, thank you for your presentation and thank you to everyone who attended today's webinar. Uh, we have the contact information for Laura Florence. Laura is our Director of Business Development and will gladly field any questions uh, or any, um, uh, you know, uh, reach out for contact. So uh, please feel free to reach out or call anytime. And with that, we will uh, end today's session. Again, thank you very much uh, for attending. Have a great day.